we are live. And actually, before I even say that, let me go into YouTube and make sure that this is, in fact, live. Man, I am actually using StreamYards right now because um, something was going on with OBS, man. I, I don't know. It, it couldn't connect to the server or something. But it does look like I am live on on here. So that's awesome. Perry Comics in the house. Rod the Reek and what's up, brother? So I had to use uh, StreamYards. I was messing around with OBS. Everything was working. And then when I went to hit start stream, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't start. And I made sure that my stream key was right. And uh, it just said that it couldn't connect to the server. So I, I don't exactly know what's up with that. I'm going to have to mess around with that later. Who do we got? We got Lemon Mouse 77 What is up? You are a brand new name to the channel that I don't know if I've seen before. So hello, Lemon. We are going to be talking about DC and Marvel comics that came out on new comic book day. Let me know. Can you guys hear me? Okay. I got the mic right here in front of me. You can't see it, but it's right there. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear me. Okay. Uh, so I picked up, uh, it was about like 12 or 13 books on Wednesday and I've already, uh, dropped my image and my indie new comic book day, you know, review video yesterday. So if you want to know what I picked up as far as indie, um, you got to flex harder, bro. I, I, I try, man. I try, Perry, but it's it's not working. And then and then I do this one like Perry does. Bam. <laughs> Flipping Perry, part of the CTT. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on with OBS, stupid. Damn it. I got OBS, and I had set up some awesome stuff in there, man, and the chat was going to be in there, and, ah, oh, damn it. But cool, man. That's why I'm, I'm happy that uh, StreamYards is here for the, the fall back, right? Uh, Joe forty seven seventy seven one says, "Yo, Jabroni, my man. Uh, I sent that package off to you like a month ago. I hope it got there to you, and you were the winner of that Walking Dead package that I sent off with a couple books in there. I I hope you got it okay. I never heard back from you saying, hey, I got it. Uh, we also got Hack seventy nine in the house. What is up, bro? So, guys, like I said." Uh, poor Mike says hello everyone. Yesterday I dropped Image and Indies. There was some uh, there was some good books. I actually did two weeks worth of reviews on that uh, on that video because the week prior I didn't have enough time to review my Image and Indie books. So I said Joe don't like my ten minute reviews. Oh no, oh no, yo yo poor Mike. So um, today we're gonna go over DC first. Then we're gonna go over to Image. I mean uh, Image Marvel pardon me. Um, and as you guys know, if you've watched this before, I like to use a website called Comic Book Roundup. And on Comic Book Roundup, as you can see the website right there, it gives you ratings from critics and from users, man. And it is a great website that I've been using for years now. If I ever have a question about a book, I always go on there and uh, just see what others are saying. Not only critics, but users like myself and yourself, man. Who do we got in the house? We got Air Spider 23. So it looks like Joe 47771. I'm just going to call you Joe. Uh, looks like Joe got it, man. That Dwight figure is awesome. Thanks. Uh, you know, uh, happy that, I, that, that that Walking Dead stuff went to a good home, man. Here, it was really just, I was going to sit around, collect dust. I'm not the biggest Walking Dead fan. Although that card game that I sent you, it looked pretty fun, man. It looked pretty fun. That was the one thing that I said, man, oh, what if I send them something else instead of this? But I'm a man of my word, and I said I was going to send you that book, so send it to you. Poor Mike. Florida represents. Hey, Rod. Hey, Perry. Yamaha Joe finally catching the live stream. Yamaha Joe, thank you for showing up, man. Uh, I was going to try to do this earlier, and the wife said, eh, 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 eh. you're going to have to wait till later because she was working, and she didn't want to be... Uh, bothered by the kids running around, but now she's out of work. And she said, go ahead and go live, Edwin. Go ahead and go live. So we're going live, man. So I use Comic Book Roundup. I really think that everybody should be using Comic Book Roundup just to get a sense of what uh, the books are looking like for that week. I did want to show you guys a book that I went to GameStop to go get because GameStop sometimes gets comic books, guys. And I'm not sure if everybody knows. And this is probably going to be an episode and what the heck is 
uh, this variant. And it's going to be GameStop variants because GameStop gets books and they get a very low print run books that are exclusive to them. And sometimes they're one or two per store. And the book that I'm talking about is actually this Marvel Comics 1000 right there. And it's got Thor, uh, Thing, Rocket Raccoon, and Hulk playing video games. And as you can see right there in the bottom, only at GameStop. So this was Marvel Comics 1000. Uh, I would suggest Second Street Marvel. What's up, brother? I suggest you guys go to, uh, to GameStop and see if you can get one. This particular variant right here, it is a, uh, it's a one per store. So there's one per GameStop and there's, I don't know, 3,000 GameStop. So this is a very low print video game. So as you guys know, I'm a big comic book and a video game guy. I love game. I love gaming. So forget, let me get a comic that I didn't get. I did not grab this uh, Marvel Comics 1000. I heard a lot of it was okay. I heard a lot of it was garbage. I don't know. I'm going to leave it in this uh, wrapped up like this. But let me know if you guys have been to GameStop and have been looking for this. Uh, Air Spider, only one that I found in the wild. Uh, poor Mike, does it show the future weeks as well or just current? It is current and past weeks on Comic Book Roundup, man. So you can go into uh, the past weeks. It's not going to show future weeks unless a comic has been sent to critics to review. And then you will find those on there. And it's usually about a week, week ahead. You'll find some books on there. Old Wolf, what's up, my man? Says, hi, Rod. Sup, Perry? Perry comments with the fire cover. I do think, man, I... I like this. I like that cover where they're sitting down just playing games. Um, I don't know exactly what kind of controller that is. <laughs> it looks like just one of those ger generic controllers, man, that they throw into a uh, into a comic or on a comic uh, comic cover. So let's jump into these reviews. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, eight, nine. Oh man. So we're going to jump into it, man. We're going to start off with DC. First book I want to talk about is Flash Forward issue number two. Um, I like this cover right here by, uh, by In Hyuk Lee. I really dig that, how he's holding Superman's cape. And if you didn't know, if you haven't been reading, so this transpires right after the events of heroes in crisis you know and a lot of a lot of people didn't like heroes in crisis i thought it started off great and then it kind of it didn't end well in my opinion uh but this is kind of dc's way of trying to build wally west back up right for a lot of people wally west hack 79 says didn't get flash forward um it's a pretty good issue we're gonna go over to uh let's go over so flash forward number two, critics gave it a 7.2, user rating of an 8.1, right? So um, people like you and I that just read comics on a daily basis, they liked it more than the critics did. You're going to find that sometimes. This story is just a continuation on, obviously, from issue number one. This guy, uh, uh, Faganot the, the something or other, I don't know what the hell his name is. He's a brand new character, uh, but I'm going to show you him right there. This guy right here who can go around and look at different multiverses has chosen Wally West Flash to go to these different multiverses and collect this dark matter uh, that has been destroying these different earths. And he's tasked him with going around and, you know, destroying this dark matter. The funniest thing I get from this book, Dan Piercy in the house. What's up, Dan? Did any of you guys finish Superman year one? No. I didn't get issue two. I got issue one and then uh, issue two came out. I looked, I looked in it. I said, I can't do it, man. This artwork is atrocious, man. Uh, John Romita Jr. It's, I, I have said it. If you guys watch me on other channels, you watch me on this channel, you know, John Romita Jr.'s artwork to me is by far one of the ugliest, but we're going to talk about a comic today that I think is ranking up there with the ugliest. Uh, funny thing about this book is he goes to this earth where these retaliators are, right? So you look at the retaliators and you get the sense of Marvel characters here, right? You got this guy, you got this guy over here, looks like Captain America, kind of like uh, a knight Captain America. Then you get another guy uh, that looks like Wolverine, kind of a Wolverine knockoff to me. There's Cyclops right up here, looks like a Jean Grey. Uh, funny, funny stuff to me. And it, even if you turn a page, Right there. Check it out. 
So Cyclops, there's Jean Grey. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know if this is a team that's been around before, but he meets, Wally West meets them on a different earth. And th their names are the Retaliators, right? Kind of like the Avengers. They, re they retaliate, they avenge. Um, uh, good for Ramita Jr. He's done much worse. Stop reading after issue two, Dan. Um, I don't know. Did you guys pick up Flash Forward? Oh, man, this... This Tempest Falconaut is trying to get Wally West prepared for something that's coming on down the line. And we're going to talk about it with the tales of the dark multiverse because we see this character again in that. And there's something, some crisis coming in the DC universe. And it looks like Wally West might be heading up a team that's going to protect everybody. Um, so I, I don't know. It was okay. Maybe a seven, 7.5 for me. It, it wasn't the greatest. It's obvious. It, it wasn't the worst. I think the artwork is is okay. Artwork was done by Brett Booth and Norm Norm Ratman. So those are two names that I am not familiar with. Uh, but I'm gonna keep going on with it. I, I want to read a good Wally West story. You know, Barry Allen, and Wally West. In my mind, those are the two best flashes. And Wally West, I, I think Wally West is probably a little bit better, right? He is the fastest of the flashes, as as, as I've say, seen and read online and in comics they say that wally is faster than barry allen barry is the original but wally west is a better version right it's always like the student best student is better than the teacher yamaha joe i've never had much of an opinion on his art one way or another story for me is always more important than art for me uh yes now i, I know you're talking about that superman year one the story was i, I thought it was pretty good in that first issue but the man the art at, at some point you do, you're reading, but you're also looking at the artwork. So if the, man, the artwork is just straining your eyes to look at, then it takes away from the story, right? Uh, I Some artwork, I think like uh, Batman, uh, Batman and the Outsiders that came out last week, that artwork is amazing. The story, it's, it's middle of the road, not the greatest, not the worst, it's okay, but the artwork just puts, puts it on top, man, puts it on top. Top. Anybody grab flash forward? Let me know. We are going to move on to the next one. We've got Teen Titans issue 35. I absolutely love this cover. This is written by Adam Glass. Artwork is done by Bernard Chang. I love this cover right here. I'm going to actually look inside to see who did this cover. I'm not entirely too sure. The art... The cover. Oh, Chang, Chang and my Mayalo, Mayalo. Not entirely sure. Oh, uh, but Teen Titans has been great, man. I actually put uh Perry Comics onto it, man. He wasn't reading it. I couldn't find that cover. Yeah, that sucks. I'm I uh you know what? Hack 79. Next time I go to my comic shop and I see another one, I'm gonna grab one for you, man. This is a super awesome cover of the PC. I think everybody should have this cover. You got all of the Titans on there. But in this book, we find out what the reasoning was behind the one member of the Titans that turned their back and has been doing the nefarious things behind their back. Now, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. Do you want me to spoil it? Because we found out actually in the last issue, in issue 34, who it was. And it was one of the Titans. And it um, this Titan grabbed the ring of the Jin, which is kind of like her lamp. Uh, one of my favorite books. Go read it, people. It is amazing. Uh, but you find out, you know, what? No, so I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Agu, I'm not going to tell you, man, who it was. I want you guys to read it. I think it's incredible, though, what they have done. I don't mind spoilers. I, you know, I'm like, but if somebody watches my show and they don't want me to spoil it for them, then I also want to give them a great show. And I can talk about this book without actually having to spoil it for you. Uh, we're going to go over to Comic Book Roundup right here. You see a 6.9 from critics and there was no users. No, Nobody actually reviewed the book, uh, but critics gave it a 6.9. So you know, kind of a failing score, right? To me, anything above a seven is passing, right? If we were in school, a 70, you'd always want a 70. Um, where was I going with that? I totally, I had a brain fart, guys. Uh, but the, the story that the character is giving on why he has kind of turned his back on the Titans, 
man, it's pretty saddening, right? It because you you didn't really know much about the backstory, and, and this person is giving you the backstory why he does it, uh, what what his uh, and I said his, so you're obviously gonna know it's a he. Uh, what what his motivations are for grabbing this ring of the gin, who he's trying to take out when he actually releases the prisoners that Robin had, you know, underneath their like Teen Titans headquarters, what he was trying to do. Uh, the multiversity in October 2014 was a first appearance of retaliators. There you go. If you wanted the first appearance of retaliators, they are a super knockoff of a bunch of Marvel characters, man. But at the end, now this isn't this isn't going to be giving anything away. But at the end, you finally see Lobo back, right? You during that whole Lobo versus Team Titans, Lobo got his butt kicked all the way up to up to the moon. Lex Luthor gave him something that he wanted, and now you see Lobo back with crush so at the bottom you see crush versus the teen titans so is crush now going to be on the side of lobo not entirely sure i have absolutely loved teen titans since i've got onto it about a year and a half ago uh i like the dynamic of this teen team and uh Damian Wayne being in charge of the team and he has a totally different mindset than everybody else. And he wants things to go his way. Nobody else's right. Uh, what else? Uh, Air Spider, you could be a major comics channel and ruin a new book with your thumbnail a day after it released. So asking is appreciated for sure. Yeah, man. Um, let me read that again. Ruin a new book with your thumbnail. Oh, what culture? Oh, I got you. So it's not me. I just put the cover on my thumbnails. I put the cover of, of the newer books and the books that people are really hyped about. I don't want to spoil, man. And that's why I asked, like, so if somebody really wants to read the book and get, in, and get engaged with the book and really love what they're reading, if I spoil it, I, I think I, I am giving away some of that magic that you feel when you read a comic. And you guys might think that's a bunch of, of phony baloney honky boo crap. But hey, I, I'm being real, man. I really, I don't watch a lot of channels that will spoil a book for me. I try to stay away from spoilers when it comes to movies, um, when it comes to TV shows, uh, I stay away from spoilers as much as I can. When a, let, Let's talk about like when Game of Thrones was at its peak, man, when everybody was watching Game of Thrones. There's going to be people out there that didn't watch it. But me, I was a big watcher of Game of Thrones. Either I watched it Sunday night when it came out, or if I couldn't watch it till Monday, I stayed off of Twitter. Twitter, Twitter will spoil everything for you. So I stayed off of Twitter, man. I that Twitter will. I mute Perry all the time. I, I mute Perry. Perry likes to spoil, man. Uh, Perry's doing his new review sh uh, show too, man. Five minutes, although his last show was eleven. But it's tough. It's tough to do these review shows and keep them under five minutes. But um, Perry does a great job of reviewing. He does a different kind of a different way of of doing it than I do. He shows like the interiors of the book, and I think it's fabulous. You guys should definitely check out Perry if you have not. Uh, I think spoilers only happen before release date, but after that, it's not spoiler in my opinion. Uh, but what if somebody hasn't watched it? Then then it's really on that person. You're, I, I get what you're saying, though. It is it is on me to stay away from the spoilers, and that's what I do with not, not going to Twitter, right? When a TV show or a movie or a comic book, I stay away from Twitter, or I don't watch YouTube shows the day of new comic book day until I have read the books, man. Stay puffed, 1983. What's up, brother? Thanks for joining. Let's get into the new book. We're not going to be here all night. I am not Perry Comics. I like to give you one hour. Rod the Rican gives me a lot of crap for, well, we've hit that one hour, Mark. Guys, it's time to go. Edwin's got things to take care of. Well, I do. I have a life. I have kids. I've got homework. Uh, I apologize. If you want to see more of me, just let me know and I'll I'll send you a I'll send you a message on Instagram of my beautiful face. <laughs> hey, tomorrow I gotta shave, I gotta shave the Fu Man Chew down, man. I got drilled this weekend, so I think I'm gonna just keep the mustache. Oh, ugly military stash. <laughs> Woo! My wife hates it, man. My wife absolutely hates the mustache, but I keep it. The old fuzzy, fuzzy tickler. Is that is that how it's called? <laughs> Damn, why is it always so hot? in this effing room, man. Anyways, I got my Marvel shirt on, guys. I like this shirt. It's kind of tight too around the arm, so it shows shows the guns off. The guns. Uh -huh. Yeah, they get. So, next book up, man, we got Tales from the Dark Multiverse, Batman Nightfall. 
written by Scott Snyder and Kyle Higgins. Artist is Javi Fernandez. And let's go on over to Comic Book Roundup. 7.9 from critics, a 6.2 from users. And that's with 12 user reviews, man. Uh, Comic Corpse, anyone else get the Fire Eastman signed variant of House of X 1 today? No, I didn't even see it at my shop, man, or or wherever it was. I did not. I, I'm wondering, did they have them online, uh, Comic Corps? Did they have them on his store? I, I wish I would have gotten one, man. I'm, I'm a fan of Eastman's artwork. A lot of people aren't. I like his kind of blocky-ish type of artwork. I dig it, man, especially I'm a Turtles guy. So I, I got to I gotta follow. I got to follow the guy that created the Ninja Turtles. So anyways, Batman Nightfall. So these are one shot, uh, one shot stories, right? And again, there is this Tempest. Where's he at? Tempest Falgonaut. We see him again in this story. He's going around to the different multiverses because something is coming into the DC universe, right? There is a crisis coming and he's trying to go to these different worlds, these different earths to see if he can recruit talent recruit heroes to come and help him during this next crisis. Yo, Immortal Biggie Shack, what's up, brother? For anybody just joining, I am using StreamYards right now, but I wanted to use OBS, but for some reason, OBS wouldn't let me stream to YouTube. Something was going on. I'm going to have to work on it later, but I said, I can't stop the stream. I got to go. So the fallback is StreamYards. StreamYards is cool, man. Uh, Perry don't know how to count. He's lucky. He's a, such a great guy. Otherwise, I'd heckle him. Heckle him for what, man? Because uh, he said five minutes and it was an 11-minute review. Still awesome, though. I absolutely love it. So this story right here is right after the Nightfall story from the 90s. Remember, Bane breaks the back, right? Bane, bra and it actually shows it. Bane breaks, breaks Batman's back. And right after that happens, Azrael becomes the Batman until Batman can get fixed up and takes the mantle back. Well, this isn't a, a what if, this is like Marvel's what if, this is what if Batman couldn't de defeat Azrael and take back the mantle of, uh, and you're going to see it right here, he actually stabs Batman in the back. Um, but what we get in this is the first appearance of the son of Bane, because after Azrael defeats Batman, he also kills Bane. And during the killing of Bane, his son is there and he witnesses it. He sees it. So uh, 30 years later, uh, Azrael is still this Saint Batman. He is now running Gotham the way he wants to. And it's uh, a lot of craziness is going on. He has his like secret police out there doing some stuff. Son of Bane is cool. We're going to get to it here in a second, though, why I think this is more in the range of the 6.2 than a 7.9 from Critics. Uh, dude, I like this book. There's a panel where it looks like Super Saiyan Batman. Um, yeah, actually, where is it? Batman goes insane. And I'm going to show you the reason Batman goes insane because Asriel has Batman tied up in the Wayne, like Wayne Tower. And he has him and he's cut off. Look at that. There's Asriel and there is Bruce Wayne Batman. And all he has left is his head, his brain, and his torso. Because over the years, every year, once a year, Asriel goes to Batman to try to get his blessing to become Batman. And Bruce Wayne keeps saying no. Once a year, gets goes there, no, no. Well, what happens? He starts cutting off limbs. One limb a year, one limb a year, 30 years. He's still asking him. And he continues to say no. Well, the son of uh, the son of Bane and um, Rash al Ghul's daughter, um, Talia al Ghul, they have now taken Batman. They have given him these like these little robots or whatever, little bats that can give his body back. But I am going to spoil this, guys. I'm going to spoil this because Batman, they Batman and this little crew are able to defeat uh, defeat Azrael. I'm going to show you right there. They are able to defeat Azrael. He cracks Bane. Bane's son cracks his back like he did to Batman. But instead of Batman saying, yeah, now let's now let's go fight crime together, Batman goes crazy and kills Talia, kills Talia al Ghul and the son of Bane. So this whole book, 
Whose vag did Bane ruin? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about that when I was reading the book, but you're you're right. The cool thing about Son of Bane, although he's now dead, so uh, pretty much worthless, he doesn't have to take the Venom serum. It's like it's in his body already. So he becomes this super huge brute, you know, just by thinking about it. He doesn't have to inject himself like Bane did. Um, Comic Corp sounds crazy. It is a crazy book, man. And if you're a Batman fan, you know, it's just a different take on Batman. It is a what if. This is what if, you know, just like we have in Marvel, right? What, um, uh, what, what's a good what if? What if Conan was in the modern time? You know, this is what if Batman wasn't able to beat Asriel after nightfall. Uh, but it's it's all for naught, man. You find out that the, the son of Bane and Talia al Ghul are dead. And then Tempest, Tempest Foganaut kind of, you know, at the end says, well, this was this was all for nothing. There's there's nobody here. This world is going to die and there's nothing we can do about it. So you read all of this for, uh, I don't know, whatever. If you haven't picked it up, I would say pick it up if you're a Batman fan just to have this one shot. But if you're not the biggest Batman fan, you don't really care about this what if story, I would I would pass on it, man. While I was reading it, I was like, man, this is Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. I got a first appearance of Son of Bane. This is going to be big. You know, it's just like when Damien, with his first appearance, you know, that's a book that everybody wants. Batman Nightfall, the, the dark Tales of Dark Multiverse. This is going to be a book people want. And then he dies. Whatever. Perry. Uh, yeah. Let me see. What did he say? Yeah, the Azrael rips his arms off and drinks his blood. It's like taking that serum. I forgot about that. You're right. So Azrael... He has become addicted to that serum, that venom serum that Bane takes. And during the fight, I think it was the son of Bane that actually like takes takes the you know those tubes off of him. So he's he's strong. Oh no, they actually take all the venom serum, the serum away from him. So he doesn't have any more to take. So he rips, he rips the son of Bane's arm off and he just drinks, drinks the green venom blood from his arm. It's it's pretty insane, man. I need to read this ASAP. That header is kind of whack, though. Are you talking about this up here? Uh, yeah, it kind of, I don't know. It, it doesn't look the best. Uh, I don't know, guys. I, I would pass on it if, if you're not the biggest Batman fan. You know, you get a first appearance of Son of Bane, but he dies. You know, he dies at the end. So eh, it really wasn't worth uh Not really going to be a book that I think is going to be spec valued in, in, in at the you know, later on, unless somehow, you know, nobody ever really dies in comics, right? Unless you're uh, Ben Parker or you're the parents of Bruce Wayne. And even then they bring them back. So Son of Bane might be coming back. Uh, they left the book like open-ended. So maybe we'll see this Batman again. Yeah. So we might see this incarnation of Batman, but I, I still don't think it's going to be uh, a book that's going to go up in value. It's just, if you want great McFarlane's back there, Jabroni, Right there. Boom. Yeah, man. I got the 298, 299, 300, and then my 301. I got it up in the corner, man. It was a first and last appearance of the Son of Bane. Yeah, man. Uh, next book I got. This is the last one from DC, guys. It's going to be Justice League, issue 34. I grabbed this uh, B cover from, is it uh, Matina? This is a Matina cover. I really dug this, man. Matina has... A lot of people, after what happened with Matina, it's a book for Batman nerds. Yes, and I am a Batman nerd. Uh, a lot of people fell off the Matina bandwagon after everything that came out with him, like, stealing people's artwork. But I think this is incredible. I really dig, uh, where is he? Right here. There he is, right there. I really dig that Green Lantern. He looks like a Super Saiyan, right? He's got the He's got the smoke and the fire coming off of him. I even like this. This uh, Wonder Woman right here looks pretty cool, man. She looks she looks tough as tough as F, tough AF, as they would say. So I like this cover right here, man. Justice for Comics, what is up? Thank you for joining, man. Dan Piercy, I don't know. They may do Son of Bane someday in reality. Um, I have been into I've been into Justice League for the longest since issue one, and before that, I was reading Justice League. I absolutely love this uh you got james tinian and scott snyder writing on it man those are two awesome awesome writers 
Uh, yeah, no big deal from Immortal Biggie. Yeah, you talking about Matina stealing artwork? So this is the main story for Year of the Villain, right? You have seen Year of the Villain kind of coming across in different, uh, in different DC comics. This is where the main story is going on. Justice League is fighting the Legion of Doom. You got a team in the past with the Justice Society of America. You got a team in the future with Commandy, Last Boy on Earth, and they're trying to defeat Brainiac. And both teams are actually trying to get pieces of the totality to come back to the present to defeat Perpetua and this Lex Luthor. Uh, so that's, you know, it's 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 comic book nonsense, right? But if you've been reading it, it's been pretty darn good. I'm going to show you some of the artwork inside. You get a lot of different teams. Um, Commandy actually takes, he goes to different, um, different universes and grabs like uh, Justice League teams from different universes. I'm trying to find it. There you go. You actually see the different um, Justice League teams. And this actually reminds me of the Green Lantern from Kingdom Come, right? Anybody read Kingdom Come? That really does look like that. And I'm going to show you closer up. If you look at it, if you look, it's like an older version. Even this, uh, he's right over here. Like an older version of Superman right there really reminds me of the Kingdom Come. Perpetua's breakout. Yes. So Perpetua is the big bad there you see her right there that's the reason you know lex luther has done what he has done he is trying to bring perpetual back to her absolute power and that is exactly what happens in this issue you do get uh kind of like a comeback like you think the justice league oh man all right starman is is he's getting more powerful justice league is gonna win and then perpetual's like nah perpetua Perpetua has risen, man. Like, that is dope. I am absolutely loving this. And if you read, like, um, Perry Comics, you read Teen Titans. And at the very end of Teen Titans, you actually see this green symbol up in the air. And you, you don't really know what that is until you read Justice League. And it is Perpetua who has put this green symbol of the totality up in the sky. So I'm thinking that every book that you read in DC this week is going to have some aspect of that totality symbol. You do have to pay attention with all that's going on. Yes, it is. Uh, it is a comic that I feel like you can't just pick this one issue up because then you're going to think, what the hell is going on? This is a complete nonsense. But if you've been picking it up for the past, I'd say about four or five issues, then it's going to make complete sense and everything is going to just meld together. I think it's a great story. Let's go over to a uh, comic book roundup. 8.4 from critics, 8.1 from users, and that's 11 critics and 17 users, man. So people are digging it. That's a B grade, right? Bit, mid B, low, low B to a mid B grade. I'm digging it. Let's see what some people are saying. If we go down uh, a 10 from Marvel, Overlord. Great story, nice art, but at a point, it was confusing. And also, I don't like the Lex. Uh, that is true. Lex is now this apex predator. And you're like, um, you know, what can't he do? He's like the ultimate bad guy. Um, it is confusing, like I said. But if, you, if you've been reading it continuously, it's not, it's, not, it's not bad. Perry, do you play Ally? or? Oh, here we go. Perry Comics. Oh, snap. Jabroni dropping knowledge again. Except for Superman versus the Klan. I did not read that one. Um Let's see what else. Uh, another fan. Pretty cool stuff. Maybe a little over the top, but I love it. I really like how the event, uh, the event is paying off in the other ongoing. So that's what I said, right? It, you, you see things in the other ongoing series that connect directly to this issue, man. So if you're digging year of the villain, I would suggest going back and picking up Justice League because that's uh, that's where you're getting the main meat and potatoes, right? Everything else is kind of like the garnishes and shit on the side. But the meat and potatoes are Justice League, guys. Justice League. So that's it from DC. What did what did I not pick up that you guys grabbed and maybe I should have picked up? I know Perry picked up that uh, Superman fights the Klan. Nah, I'm good, man. I think it was like $10. And it was in a smaller, it was like a smaller book too. I pass on that. Uh, Justice for Comics review of CBSI Hot. 10 comics for the week. Do you want me to review them? Have they already put them out? I don't want to do anything that the guys from CBSI would, you know, would be mad at me for. Uh, I know that's a, a point of contention. 
with CBSI and other groups, man. I, I don't want to get into that. I think they're both awesome, man. Uh, Dalaran, I need to get a Justice League trade. Who's Dalaran? It was like a serious book, but looked like animated show. Yeah, that's what it looked like. But when you when you have the when you have the KKK, it can't really be like a, a funny a funny book, right? There's nothing funny about the clan, man. And Superman kicking the clan's ass. That's that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, but yeah, I guess it did look like the, the animated because I, I kind of flipped through it when I was there. Um, but I passed. Is that okay for me to say, Rod? Pass? Buy or pass? I passed. I didn't buy. <laughs> Who cares what CBSI thinks? I care, man. I want to be I want to be friendly with all and I want to have friends all over the all over the world, man. All over. Let me do the parry. That's the parry. <laughs> Everybody do the parry while you're watching Edwin, man. Uh, let me go ahead and get the next book ready because we're going to get into Marvel. No one takes CBSI seriously. I like CBSI, man. They got some good articles on there, man. My boy Dan Percy writes for CBSI, man. And uh, Dan actually asked me to come on a live stream that he's going to be having here soon. So I can't wait to do that. There are some good articles on there. I do like to look at the hot top 10 just to see, hey, do I already have one of the books on there? Is this something that I can go to my comic shop to uh, to pick up at very cheap? I don't buy books from that hot top 10 that I've already spiked. I love the cover of Soup's year three, slow week, so I got it. Which cover? Because I think the Frank Miller cover for that was disgusting disgusting i mean look at their boxing hand like their boxing glove hands it's i think it was that man uh perry comics with the l m a o left <laughs> reminds me of the the fortnite uh there is a uh there's an emote that you can do in fortnite and it's like a donkey's laugh and it's it's a i, I don't know whatever uh I, I get i get off track man perry dang it did anyone get the mask or Rick and Morty D and D? If you want to know about the mask, go check out Perry's show. I did not pick up the mask, and I had two opportunities to pick up masks because I could have picked it up on Wednesday and I didn't. And then today I had some time between a class and I went to a comic book store and they had it there and I didn't get it again, man. And it was mainly due to Perry's review. I was just like, ah, nah, nah, sounds cool, but I'm not, I'm not gonna get it. His style gives people a chance. Hope Jabroni, whose style? Oh, you're talking about Frank Miller. Man, Frank Miller used to do some awesome artwork, but I don't know. Maybe he's getting too old or it's falling off, man. Not not nice at all. So let's get into Marvel. First book up, Captain Marvel, issue number 11, Mark Brooks cover. We got Kelly Thompson writing. Artist is Carmen Nunez Carnero. I'm going to tell you the truth right now. I got this book strictly for the spec. I flipped through it. I read a couple pages, not the biggest fan. We are going to flip over comic book roundup, 8.9 from critics and an 8.4 from users. So, you know, people are digging it, man. Almost an A on that. But this continues. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Perry Comics. I want to see the back issue. Yeah, nothing crazy about mass. It was like it was right. Justin for comics with his hunched back. He probably can't move that pencil. Well, Perry, I was like, no way you're reading that. I always have a lot of new books, man. I love, I love new comic book day, man. What can I say? I love new comic book day. I love comic books in general, you know, old, new, whatever. I don't pick up everything. You know, I have a set amount of money that I use towards comics every week. And this week, Captain Marvel was in there mostly for the spec. And I'm going to tell you what the spec is kind of spoilerish, but everybody is specking on this new, like dark star or dark Marvel. I don't know what the hell she's going to be. Uh, Dark Star or something like that. But this is the cover to next month's Captain Marvel. And I think that's an amazing Mark Brooks cover. But you do kind of see them DC dollar books. You do see her at the end. And there she is right there. Uh, this is, uh, what's her name? Ripley Ryan. I actually dropped a video about this maybe two months ago, speculating on who this star could be. And it was Perry that actually put me onto it. And I said, Perry, if you're not going to make a video, I'm going to make one. He said, go ahead, Jabroni, go make that video. So I did. And I said in that video, I speculated, hey, I think Captain Marvel issue number one is a good book to get because that is the first appearance of Ripley Ryan, who I think is 
this star character. Sure enough, that's exactly who it was. So I think, uh, I don't let him fool you, Jabroni is balling. Shoot, man, I wish, bro. If I was balling, I would have a first print copy of Ninja Turtles, number one. But I don't. I have a third print, so I'm balling on a budget. <laughs> balling on a budget. Jabroni is modest. I Man, I... I I ball on a budget, guys, and I and I get books that I like to read, and I speculate on some, and this is the book to get to speculate. This is the end fight between Captain Marvel and Star. He rips out this, this gem that she has in her chest that has been siphoning off the powers of, of Captain Marvel from the chest of uh, Star. Jabroni's balling. Well, shit, everyone is balling compared to me. Nah, man, y'all balling. Captain Marvel's always a decent spec series. Yeah, so guys, I would definitely, if I were you, I would go pick up at least just get one copy of this, man. It is a cameo first appearance of if she is going to be Dark Star or whatever. I like I like kind of the artwork that they got in the, in the end here. I'm going to show you that. Let me see if it, there it is. So that Mark Brooks cover is pretty dope. I know you can't really see it, but there you go. 1120, that's going to be a big book to get, man. Um, I was going to show you that. Under the user reviews, I see X a lot. Arc was wrapped up nicely while leaving an interesting cliffhanger. You see? Interesting. 8.5 from Kitty Nunn. Satisfying ending to Thompson Carnero's run on the comic. Brings everything together for a big finale. So, guys, there you go. People are digging it. I thought it was uh, it was cool. Eh, I picked it up mostly for the spec value, man. Vu Hong, what is up, man? Thank you for joining me. We are talking about Marvel Comics. I talked about DC. And if you want to check it out, check this video out after we're done and it will upload and it will post, man. I hope you guys are enjoying the live streams that I've been doing. I've been going live more often, man, and I, I dig it. It gets hot as hell in this room. That's the only aspect of it I don't like. And I talk too damn much. Comic book broke gang. That's what we should. We should make. We should make T-shirts to say that the comic book broke gang. Drink water, man. Let me tell you something. When I was. Uh, when I first joined the army, right, everybody, if you if you join the army, you go to basic training, right? Basic training. We have drill sergeants. And one of the biggest things the drill sergeants always told us was drink water, drink water, drink water. And then while we would be in the middle of doing something, you would hear them all the way in the background, drink water. And then you'd have to turn over, dude, and you would have to drink your whole canteen, which was what? One quart of water. Whatever you had in there, you had to drink it all. And then once you've drank it all, then you had to turn it over on your head to show them that you drank all of your water. And some people, they couldn't drink it all, man. So they're just splashing water all over themselves. I don't know. Uh, any, anybody in the chat, you have, have, you know, military members, have you been to basic and do you remember that? I remember it uh, very, very uh, vividly. And basic training for me was 2006. So that was what, 13 years ago, man. I'm an old, old man, old man. Here is a book that I picked up. And mostly for the cover, I didn't read it, guys. Um, but this is going to be crazy. Issue number one. I picked this book up. It is like uh, Marvel's version of Mad Magazine, I guess. Uh, I like this cover though. You got this guy on the front with all of the heroes and stuff trying to get through the door. You got Wolverine's claws right there. Uh, let's see who do we got here. Jorge Tello, Airborne. There you go. Airborne out there at, uh, what is that, Fort, uh, Fort Bragg, Fort Bragg. I remember Fort Bragg. I've never been to Fort Bragg, but anywhere I ever went in the Army, anybody that had ever been to Fort Bragg was like, well, back at Bragg, back at Bragg. And we used to call them the Bragg Parrots, man, Fort Bragg Parrots, because that's all they ever said whenever they'd go somewhere else. Well, back at Bragg, we used to do them, back at Bragg and back at Bragg. Airborne's crazy, man. It's not something that I'd ever do or ever try to do. I do salute anybody that, that did that craziness. I'm not trying to jump out of no perfectly good working airplane, right? That's insane to me, man. Insane to me. Don't jump out of airplanes. Uh, nope. Only Call of Duty over here, man. I was a Call of Duty guy. Just the stories from my brother. That's the one I want to get. And Fort Benning. Oh, never been to Benning either. Uh, that Yeah, this was the, actually the only cover for this that my comic shop had. So when I saw it, I looked at it. I was like, oh, that's cool. So what's inside? Just a bunch of different stories by different artists. I'm going to show you this first page right here. If you see right here, there's a bunch of different stories and letters. Uh, the lettering is done by different people. Uh, the artwork is done by different people. I, tr Guys, I tried to read it. And to me, there's just so much nonsense that I can take in a comic. And 
Uh, I couldn't do it, but I picked it up. You never know. It's a, it's a number one from Marvel. Could be a first appearance of somebody random in there that I, I don't know who it is. Any of you guys pick it up. Could not find that anywhere. My, my shop had three of them. They had three and I took one. So there were two left. I didn't see any of the other covers there though, man. I know there was like three covers for it. Um, but none there, uh, none of the other covers. Let's go on to the next one. And I didn't show you comic book roundup for this book because I didn't look it up guys. <laughs> didn't look it up. Next book up on the list. This one got some flat guys. It's going to be Spider-Man issue number two from JJ Abrams, Henry Abrams. Artist is Sarah Pacelli. Pacelli. And it got a 6.1 from critics, 6.5 from users. Uh, Dan Percy, what is up, bro? Uh, I'm, what is up? You're leaving. You've already been here for a while. See, sometimes I get tongue twisted and I get nervous and I start saying a bunch of nonsense, man. So I salute you guys that do live shows all the time and you are able to perfectly say everything. For me, I get tongue twisted. I get nervous and I start saying a bunch of nonsense. Dan Piercy, you have a great night, man. Thank you for joining me for as long as you did. Uh, Comic Corpse, all right, back on the PC. Uh, Joe for Joe, I have golfed at Fort Carson. There you go. Big O, what about that X-Men number one art germ cover has to be my cover of the week. We're getting to it, Big O. We're getting to it. Uh, Justice for Comics, stick to making movies. Uh, yeah, man. So let's get into it. This right here, um, it was not as good as the first issue. I thought the first issue was cool, man. Really cool. You get this different story on Peter Parker and then his son because of the death of Mary Jane. And Peter Parker says, to hell with being Spider-Man, this new cadaverous. And you see this cadaverous character down there. Peter Parker says, to hell with being Spider-Man. I'm done with this. I lost my arm. But now his son has grown up. And Peter Parker has kind of been uh, an absentee father. He's not around anymore. He's off doing his own job. And he has left the guardianship to uh, to Aunt May. This issue, his son puts on the costume. He At the beginning, he has decided, I don't want to be Spider-Man. This is not the life for me. I can't believe that this is this is what, uh, what my father has left me. So he actually burns the suit. He barbecues it. But he goes on this date, and the girl shows up in a costume. So... Uh, he goes back out to try to find the costume, and it is burnt to a crisp. But luckily, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, keeps extras on him. So he goes out and starts saving people as uh, Spider-Man. And this is the first time Spider-Man's been seen in, like, what, 15 years or so? Uh, man, I thought the, sto it, the story was okay, in my opinion. 6.1 to 6.5 is a little harsh. I would probably give it maybe a 7. Um, but Peter does finally come back home right after his job is done, wherever he is. And he um, he sees that his son has taken up the mantle of, of Spider-Man. And his, his son shows up, Ben Park, and he's like, hey there, Spider-Man. Not the greatest issue, but if you want to read a different take on Spider-Man and a different story on Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man really isn't your thing or Miles Morales Spider-Man, eh, pick up Spider-Man, uh, pick up this Abrams Spider-Man. It's 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 not the best and it's not the worst, man. I can't pass. I think I'm going to continue picking it up. It's only, I think it's like five issues. I, I, I want to see where they go. I want to see where they go with this story. I'm always interested in reading more Spider-Man stories. Uh, Perry Comics, I say nonsense for hours live. Yes, yes, you do, but I enjoy it and I get a good laugh. Uh, e. Ortiz, I thought that was, I thought that was Perry Comics thing. It is, but I think Perry Comics is, is rubbing off on me, man. <laughs> AJ Hernandez, what's up, man? Uh, what's up, me and my nephew watching? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the bad words to a minimum. I think I've done pretty well. I might have dropped the S word or the A word, but I definitely won't drop no F bombs, man. No F bombs. I'll leave that to Perry on his show. Repair Tech Tony, forgot to pick up Spider-Man number two this week. I'm not a huge Spider-Man fan, but I like the first issue. Yeah, exactly. I like the first issue as well. Um, but the second issue, maybe if the first issue was up here, second issue, it, it just didn't live up to it. But what I do is I'll pick up 
the third issue and make my determination on that. Let's see if the third issue picks up and, and does a little bit better um, than that first one. Let's actually go back. I want to go back to comic book roundup and let's see what users are saying, right? Let's see. Walt, Walt Gator 93. Issue such a letdown. Art is okay. Some of the dialogue seems bit forced. Nothing about this book screams out that this has to happen. That's Walt Gator. But Alan gave it an 8.5. He says, I think the people hating on this run is only because they thought it was going to be Spider-Man 4. Uh, I really like the first issue. For this issue, it's not as good as the first. Was not on my toes the whole time waiting to see what happened. So there you go, man. I was I was kind of me. Me and Alan are on the same wavelength right it wasn't as good as the first issue but it wasn't bad artwork was pretty good i'm gonna wait to see what happens with the third issue uh running deer philosophy i like your three issue philosophy uh perry comics sensor mode activated uh aj hernandez it's okay he knows better <laughs> i still don't like to do it man first time on a live show great content on some channel mvs thanks for joining man uh i do let me let me get this. We got two books left and it's the two big books from Marvel. We're going to get to them. But I wanted to say, man, I truly appreciate everybody that watches my channel and watches and uh, supports me. I started this about a year and a half ago and there was absolutely no way in my head that I think I would get to even, you know, 100, 200 subs. And I'm, I'm now at 840 or so, 850 and working my way. I'm climbing the ladder to Perry Comics and to Rod the Reekin, man. I'm trying to get up there to a thousand. And I appreciate you guys for watching, you know, my my shows and anything that I can do better, let me know for sure. Cause I'm always trying to dabble in different things and make things better. And if you if you want to see something new from me, let me know. That's why I started the variant. What the heck is this variant? Because I think that was a uh that was a part of comic book cha uh YouTube channel, whatever content. That people weren't really talking about, man. And there's a lot of people out there that collect that don't know about these things. So I think it was great for me to do that, right? <laughs> Stroking my own ego. Stroking the ego. <laughs> uh, Perry Comics, laugh out loud. We on the way to a thousand, man. I, I'm really trying, man. Really, really trying. Me, you, Rod the Rican, and Johnny. Old Johnny boy. John's comments with kids. We're getting up there, man. I love putting out content to to everybody out there in the comic community, and I and I hope that you find something um, something helpful in my videos. I'm not just making videos to make them; I'm making them to help you guys out, man. Because sometimes you don't pick up all the books on a given week, and maybe I did, and my my review is the deciding factor whether you know what Edwin said this was a good book. I'm gonna go get it, or Edwin said this was hot garbage water, as I like to say, and and I'm not gonna get it. So. Jorge Tello, I remember in basic at Fort Seal, the drill sergeants will wait exactly 45 minutes after Chow Hall to smoke us. This happened every day in basic. Just look better than the other. Oh, man. Talk about smoking. Now, for people that don't know what a smoke session or what, what he means by smoking us would mean is to just make us do push-ups until we throw up or make us do air squats or whatever it was or sit-ups until we just couldn't stand up anymore, man. That's what a smoke session was, man. And we used to get smoked all the time, man. Jorge Teo, glad to see a fellow brother doing his thing on YouTube. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. Repair Tech Tony, I'm liking the variant videos. It's good stuff. Yeah, I'm putting it out there, hoping you guys find some uh, uh, some value in those videos. Let's get over my two. Uh, let's, let's go through the next two. Next up, we got Absolute Carnage. Absolute Carnage. Issue number four, written by Donny Cates, artist Ryan Stegman. I grabbed this Ryan Stegman cover. I think this was amazing. Jabroni needs to realize he would blow up if he started his shows to wrestling music and rips his shirt off. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Rip it off. No, man, I, get, I like my shirts, man. I like my shirts. Uh, so, Absolute Carnage, let's move on over to Comic Book Roundup. 8.6 from critics, 9.0 from users. There is one issue left on this. It is a five-issue comic book series, and I know we talked about it on Biopass. We weren't sure if it was five or six, but it is It is five. Uh, I think the artwork in here is amazing. At the very end of the last issue, we had Hulk taken over by the Venom symbiote. 
And this one starts off with Carnage and the Venom Hulk fighting it out. I think that's incredible, but this book doesn't give enough like power to the Hulk. Hulk is just an incredibly powerful character and Carnage is able to really whip his butt like it's nothing, man. I mean, it's so easy. And then without the symbiote, you know, Eddie Brock has to figure out a way to fight all of these carnage, you know, these these carnage mindless beings down here, man. So he grabs he grabs a few weapons that he can find and goes to work on them. We do find out in this issue that all of the heroes that have ever had a symbiote on them at the 9.0. Thank God Rod isn't here. Rod was here. He must have left or something, man. Uh, Perry comments he needs a bandana and a blonde wig. I got the I got the Fu Manchu. Um, but what we do find out is the heroes that had the symbiote, right? The maker has put them into this machine to take the, the venom, the, the symbiote codex out of their spines. And what Eddie Brock was thinking was they're burning. He's burning them away, right? They're destroying it. But instead of destroying them, he's actually putting them into this vat. And I'm going to show you what the vat, this big vat full of junk looks like. He's uh, let's see, where's that? Yeah, he's kind of right in front of it, right there. And this is full of nothing but symbiotes in there. So at the end of the fight between Hulk and, and Carnage, Carnage takes the Venom symbiote onto himself and he becomes this super powerful god, you know, Carnage Venom mix. Well, Eddie has to fight him back. So what does Eddie do? He punches through this big metal vat that's full of symbiote and he takes all of these codexes onto himself and now he has taken on the minds not not only the i'm gonna flip to the page where he has it as you can see right there he's got it all that symbiote is starting to envelop it's starting to take over and you see it right there we get eddie brock is back as venom and he talks about in this issue that all of the symbiotes were on different people like Wolverine and on uh, the thing and on Captain America. So it has kind of downloaded their minds. So now he's thinking strategically like Captain America. He's thinking like a straight up animal beast that wants to do nothing but kill like Wolverine. So now not only is he Eddie Brock Venom, but he has all of these different, you know, powers kind of, you can say powers and minds of the different heroes that it has. Carnage did put a hurting on the Hulk, man. He he whips the Hulk, which kind of sucks because I'm reading Immortal Hulk and in Immortal Hulk, Hulk's a badass, dude. He is he can not be bested. Nobody can defeat him. But in this issue, Carnage, Carnage is putting it on. Putting it on him, man. So much so that he uh where's it at? Showing I'm showing I'm showing there it is. Boom, he rips, he rips the Venom symbiote right off of Bruce Banner, man. So it's it's pretty insane. I have really enjoyed reading Absolute Carnage. Super Venom sounds right. He kind of really is a super venom, man. It's it's pretty dope, man. <laughs> Brock leveling up. Yeah, right. If you're playing, if you're playing a game, a, a video game where you can level up, that's kind of what he did. He has leveled up, but so has Carnage. So the next issue is the last issue. And it's going to be Carnage versus Venom. We're pretty sure we know how it's going to end, right? Um, you know, Venom's going to win in the end of the day. It's comic books. It's a Marvel book. The heroes win. One question I had for you guys. If you see in the back, they still have these, uh, you know, these pictures, these drawings. Absolute Carnage. Who's hand drawn by Mark Bagley. And they were in issues of Absolute Carnage number one. And there were 20 of them. And only eight of them have been found, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven. Have you guys been looking in your comic shops to see if Absolute Carnage issue number one had these? I looked in every comic book store here in San Antonio and none of them had them. None of them had them, man. So it's been, what, like three or four months since issue number one? Those gotta be out there somewhere, guys. Go look in your comic book stores. You, know, you never know. You could be a lucky person to find one. And I want to say while i'm talking to you guys right here we're gonna go to we're gonna go to ebay and we're gonna see 
if uh, these have been found, absolute, if, if they've been sold, absolute carnage. How the hell do you spell absolute carnage? There you go. Absolute carnage one Mark Bagley. Let us see. Uh, I don't see it on here. It's being sold or anything. I wonder what these are going for. I, I could have sworn I had seen one online that people were, somebody was asking like $3,000 for one of these. Sketch. Mark, absolute carnage, Mark Bagley sketch. I'm going to show you what I'm, I'm actually doing over here on this side. So I'm just flipping through like the say or the sold items and it doesn't look like this item is on here. That's a pretty dope. I like that. That carnage. I don't know. For $3,000, I definitely would not pay $3,000 for it. Has anybody else seen seen that on there? 76 bucks for Amazing Spider-Man 361. That's a pretty good deal, man, for a, for a newsstand. Anyways, let's get into the last book, guys. Last book, because we're hitting that hour mark. Last book is X-Men, issue number one from Jonathan Hickman. Artist is Linneal Francis Yu. And I went ahead, I grabbed this, uh, I grab. I guess this is the B. Is this a B cover? No, this is A, B, C, D, E. This is the E cover variant. If you didn't know how to tell what the variant is right there, it's the number five. It is the fifth variant. Uh, and who does this? Who made this variant cover? No idea. So I like this. This is going to be a connecting cover with all the other X-Men number one books that, that are coming out, right? Like so Marauders comes out next week. Then we got X-Force uh, coming out. So all those X-Men book number ones that come out, there's going to be a connecting cover. So I like that. I wanted to pick them all up. Let's go over to uh, comic book roundup. 8.6 from critics, 8.5 from users. I am not that high on it. I'm probably like a 7.0. And, and the biggest reasoning for me, hey, there's my wife, my beautiful wife, Vanessa Ocasio. What is up, babe? What is up? Now, the biggest reason for me giving it that grade, and this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the artwork, I think that the artwork in this is disgusting. I am not a fan and I have not been a fan of uh, Linneal Yu's artwork. And it, it dates back all the way to Secret uh, secret Invasion. Like, look at, look at Storm. His line work, I don't understand why everybody has to have these lines. Like, right, where is it? Right by their mouth. If you look at everybody's mouth and their face and their head, all these lines, I just don't understand why he has to do that like stress marks or something man i picked up the art germ variant for x-men one yeah i didn't get the art germ variant because i wanted the connecting covers uh this house of x and powers of 10 were up here and then this fell fell down for me considerably it wasn't as good what you get in this is like a feel-good story of cyclops and his family living on the blue side of the moon and they're having a cookout, and I, I don't know, man. I wish I could really talk to you more about it, but the artwork is so atrocious to me that it it was just hard to really look. Look at Cyclops' face. Why the hell does he have to have these damn lines? Oh, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. But I do not look at his dad. Look at his dad. What the hell are these lines, man? What are these lines? Yeah, I'm sh I'm pooping on this book big time. You find out that there's a summer house on the moon and that they use the portals from Kokoa that they can go from Kokoa, the island, up to the moon to go live. And there are different people living. There's a floor plan of the house and who's in each room and what's on each you know floor of the house. Who gives two hells about where people are living? Is this going to be a major part in this book? I don't give a crap what the house looks like. 
please tell me somebody else is on this this train with me, man. <laughs> Am I insane to think that what the hell do we care? The best parts of this book were these parts up by the, the star where they're trying to rebuild what the X-Men destroyed in House of X, right? We remember this from House of X where they're trying to build this mother mold. Those are the best parts of the book. The parts where you're in Cyclops' house with the rest of his family and Wolverine is there and and um, who else is in this damn house? Jean Grey is up there and his, and his dad. I think it was nonsense. Too much fixer-upper, too many dang lines. I'm hoping X-Force looks better. Yes, and, and we got... So X-Men, Marauders, Excalibur, New Mutants, X-Force, and Fallen Angels. I'm going to pick up all the number ones because I want the whole connecting cover. But it, it, it better not be a whole book on where the where the hell they live and what the house plan looks like and who living in what room. Because I don't give two Fs about any of that, guys. I'm sorry. Just me. It's my opinion. Some people have absolutely loved this book. I did not like it. But... Teach their own. I'm going to, uh, it's hard for me to say I'm not going to continue to pick up X-Men because X-Men's a fake. I like X-Men. But if Francis Yu continues to draw the way that he or she has drawn on this, I might be dropping it, man. I think it's funny they put Jean's room in the middle of Wolverine and Cyclops. That is a funny part. I thought that Cyclops and Jean were back together. I guess they are not. Where is that stupid floor plan? Let's see. There it is. So right here. Shows you the floor plan, and you got Cyclops, Wolverine, and Gene. So it's not in the, it's not right in the middle. You got Cyclops and Wolverine, and then Gene's room, and then uh, Vulcan and Havoc. There's an empty room for who the hell gives a crap, right? I don't understand. <laughs> Whatever, man. What did you guys think of X Men? I didn't think it was that great. Uh, I'm waiting. Uh, I'm waiting for X Force. I hope X Force is amazing because I've loved X Force in the past. That is a Black Ops, X-Men group, right? That's what we want, man. Wolverine was on that team. Deadpool was on that team, man. They were just killing people left and right, didn't care. I enjoyed that, man. Uh, so we're end, we're nearing the end because Edwin the Comic Brony is starving and uh, the family is waiting for me. I did want to ask one question. With my what the heck is, I said that the next episode was going to be on recalled and uh, misprinted comics. But I think what I'm going to do is split those two between two shows. And the first one I'll do is probably on misprinted. And then I'll do one on recalled or vice versa, because I think there's enough meat on the bones for both of those to be their own show. Let me know what you guys think. The next episode is uh, going to be on one of the two. I'll let you guys decide on which one you want to hear more or learn about more the fastest or earliest. I don't know. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a great weekend. I myself have uh, Army Reserve drill this weekend, so the beard and the Fu Manchu is going away. I hope you have a great Friday, a great weekend, and until uh, Tuesday, you'll see me on Tuesday for Buyer Pass with Perry Comics. I'm Rod the Rican, we're going to be talking about next week's new comic book day, guys. So thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for everybody that's been in the chat, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace, as Perry likes to do.